Welcome, this is Professor Vic Brokaw, Professor 42, bringing you the next debugging lecture today. We're going to look at another feature of the debugger to help us find our errors. I've chosen the dice class to take a look at. If we're going to simulate rolling of dice, the key properties we're going to need is randomness. The dice rolls have to be random. So I've got a simple, very simple random number generator class. It has takes a seed for debugging so that each time you run it, it has a different mat set of values and I get a random die roll. The random CPP file is very simple. We initialize to the current time, uh, which will guarantee us to have a random num different random sequence every time we run it and we'll get our random numbers. The die class itself represents one individual die out of a collection. With dice, you cannot have a dice with less than four sides. You try to have a three-sided dice sometime. So the minimum number of sides is uh, four. I've also decided that the default number of sides will be six. But you could have any number of sides all the way up to as many as 100 if you prefer. But if we're having a collection of dice, we only need one random number generator for the whole collection of dice. So hence, the die class has, a, as a public data member, a static instance of the random number class. That means there will only be one instance of the random number generator, no matter how many die we make. We'll store the number of sides, and the current roll will be the current number on the dies. Of course, once you make a die, it can't change. You can't suddenly have a six-sided die morph into an eight-sided dice, and then morph into a 12-sided die. So once a die is created, the number of sides has to be constant. The member functions are very simple. We'll have a toss, which will get a new number, and then we'll have two axis functions, uh, get the roll value, and get how many sides are on this particular dice. The more important class is the dice class, which represents a collection of these dice. And here I'm storing it as a dynamically allocated array so that it can grow in size as we add the different, different numbers of dice to our collection. So it will store how many are in the array, number of dice, and the <clears throat> array of pointers to these individual die, the die array. One of the key functions will be add dice. So initially the collection of dice will have nothing in it. And then as we go along, we can add however many dice, of however many sides that we wish. We'll have a function roll to roll the dice, and then we'll have a couple of ways of accessing them, depending on what the user wants to do with the dice. For example, we can get the total number of all what's on all the dice, or we can have a fancy little display that displays all the dice values. We can have a, a function to get the die values if you want to have an array that stores the current contents of each die's face. We can have a couple of helper functions to get the number of sides and get the number of dice, no, get the number of uh, sides on the dice. When it, a little tester program then is supposed to produce something like this. Initially, we've got no dice, so if you try to display the contents of your dice, it should say no dice have been allocated. Then we'll add a couple of dice to it. Uh, in this case, six-sided dies, and we'll see what the current die roll is. This one is pretty dismal. Uh, then we'll come along and add four eight-sided dice. So now we have two sixes and four eight-sided dices, and then we'll roll them, and we get a little bit better roll this time, depending on how you want to see the results. And we should not have any memory leaks when we're done. That's what the program is supposed to do. But let's look at our first debugging situation. Starting point is we'll... Uh, start without, we'll start debugging, turn the program loose, and the first thing it does is crash and boom. Of course, none of us have ever had a crash and boom before. But what do you do when it does this? You've got a Visual Studio message saying, unhandled exception access violation. What do you do? Don't panic. Simply click a break at this spot. And it's showing you at this point right here where the little arrow is at. This is what he's trying to execute, and it's bombing out. Now, at this point, I'm going to call your attention to another area we haven't looked at. Over here on the right is the call stack. Notice the little yellow arrow is pointing to where we are at at the point that we're dying. Right now, it says we're dying in the dice, colon, colon, add die function. How did we get there? 
Well, this is the call stack. We got to this function from, in this case, main on line 21. Now, the nice part is if you click on, on this one, it will open up and show you where we called the add dice. He called add dice here, and if it ever succeeded, he'd come back here to this point and get how many sides and go ahead and show the results. Uh, back to the one we're on. So this call stack will show you how, how you got to where you got. Now one side detail, since we're running a DOS program, how did main get called? Well, main got called from what I always call the C startup code. Um, there's actually some startup code that cranks up and handles the parses and handles the DOS command line to give you the arg values uh, that were available or uh, when the program was started. So you can actually see the startup code here if you really wanted to. You could click on them and bring them up. But right now we've got to solve our problem. We're dying. We're accessing uh, core garbage and trying to copy it around. Well, if we look at this line, what is it supposed to be doing? Well, we're adding a, more dice to the collection. So that means we have to copy. We first had to allocate a new die array. That is how many dice we've currently got plus how many we're trying to add. So we've got to make a bigger array here called the temp. And then we've got to copy all the old existing dice over into this new array and then go allocate and store all of the newly added dice that we're adding to our collection. So this first loop is supposed to be copying the existing die pointers into the larger array. And congratulations if you've already spotted the boo-boo. The number of dice currently is zero, and our for loop is saying keep going as long as i is less than or equal to zero. So it's trying to copy a non-existent number of dice. So I'll make that correction here. Change the equal sign out of there. We'll stop debugging and turn it loose again and see what happens now. Oh boy, we're starting to see some output. Number of sides, number of dice two, number of sides six, and we should see, oh boy, we've got four and a five, total of nine, looking good, but then it crashes. Heap corruption detected? Uh, what do we do? Well, it says press retry to debug. Well, press retry, and it says we've triggered a breakpoint. We break and stop, and we look at the screen and we go, what on earth is this? Well, we are in C code that's trying to handle something. And here's the actual message it displayed, heap corruption. Uh, horrible message. What has happened? We've wiped out memory that isn't ours. How did we get to this code? DBG heap dot C. Well, over here in the call stack, it shows you how we got there. Here's where we're at, crashing and burning. That was called from this function, but again, it isn't ours. It's part of the C library. That was called more from the C library, from operator uh, delete, which is called from operator array delete. How did we get to there? Well, here's the first bit of our code. Let's double click it right here. We are dying because we're saying delete angle bracket array. We're trying to delete the old existent array. And when he does so, he's telling us that up to this point, we have wiped out and clobbered memory beyond the bounds of our current array we're trying to delete. He's trying to notify you that you've had a core overlay problem. So we have to back up and look a little bit earlier. Uh, how did we get to here? Well, we're deleting the old array because we've added new dice to the array. <clears throat> so initially, we copied the existing uh, pointers over. We got that one fixed. It looks like we had the two six-sided dies rolling just nicely. But now we're adding four eight-sided dies. So the next loop says allocate and store all the newly added dies. So it says, OK, start out I at zero. Uh, have J start out at the current number of dice, which is two. So we're appending onto the end of the existing array. So we're storing in the temp sub J all the new guys starting at I equals zero out of the out of this new array. Uh, and so what does it say to do? Well, it says to uh, keep going as long as I is less than the number of dice we're trying to add. Wait a minute. Have you spotted the boo-boo? Aha. It says keep going as long as I is less than or equal to the number of dice. Look, if we've allocated four dice and we're going from zero to four, that means we're copying a fifth non-existent block of data in there. Oops. Hence, we have 
wiped out core beyond the core we've actually got allocated. It also points out the fact that if you made the one boo-boo up here by having less than or equal look further, it probably has occurred more than one time. Duh. And it has here. So that's what's happened. Uh, we have copied five dice when there's actually only four dice there. So let's fix this bug. Well, stop debugging and turn it loose, start debugging and see what happens now. Uh, and at this point, it hit the breakpoint that I put in the main program so we can stop and look at our output. And our output is looking good. Is looking well, it's looking. Look at that. How can a dice have a zero side? It's if it's a six-sided dice, it goes from one to six, not zero to something. Or other, if we got that there, and there's also a zero down here. Oops. Now we've got an incorrect output situation to find. So I'll stop debugging, and at this point. We're having problems with the random number generator. So let's go over here to our random number generator and stick a breakpoint uh, where it actually gets the random number of die rolls. And I'll start debugging and we'll go until we get to this spot and we can start to see what's going on. Uh, and as you can see, if you're taking a random number and modding it by the number of sides, it says take this huge integer and give me the remainder of what's left over after I divide it by six. So the remainder would be 0 through 5. And if you want to have numbers from 1 to 6, you have to add plus 1 to that number. So if we change it to read, give me the remainder, 0 through 5, and then add 1 to it, we'll have numbers from 1 to 6. That was our remaining bug. I'll again stop it, turn it loose. And this time I'll start without debugging because I know it's going to work. And bingo, we're in business. Uh, we actually got a good die roll on one of these, terrible on the other one. Uh, down here we came out fairly okay with a couple of sevens on the eight-sided dice. And no memory leaks, yay, we're in business. Okay, the takeaway then from this first three set of lectures is this. Three points. One if a block of code could fail in production, then for heaven's sakes, insert some if-then-else logic to catch it, or try catch logic if you prefer. Always test for and handle the potential failures uh, before they actually make it into your production code, so you have to go find them. Secondly, make good use of the locals, auto, and the watch windows to see the current contents of your variables. Uh, now, I haven't pointed it out, but you can expand the dereference this parameter. Let me go back to our <coughs> dice.cpp file and stick a breakpoint in here at any random spot. Start debugging until we get to that point. And I'll point this out. Notice in the autos there is a this parameter for classes. If you click it, it will then open up and show you all the stuff that's in the, the various classes. And in this case, there's hardly anything in the, in the dice uh, in the uh, random number class. So let's continue. Let's get rid of this breakpoint and get a little further along. I'll show you a better example. Um, uh, we need a better breakpoint. Now if you open up dereference this, here's all the member variables that are in that class. The number of dice, the die array pointer, the number of dice, number of sides, and as well as all the automatic. So you can always open up uh, the, this parameter on a class and see exactly the number of variables. In the case of a dice, there's just two member variables, the number that's in the array and <coughs> the pointer memory address of where the array starts. So that's what I mean by this second one. Make good use of the locals and expand the dereference of this when you need to see it. Use a watch window. I typically do use that when I want to monitor variables contents across a whole bunch of function calls, particularly when I'm passing it to these functions via reference or via a pointer. 
And the third point from today is use the call stack. Whenever you crash and burn, don't panic. Just break it, break out of it. Go down and look at the call stack. And yes, you're likely to see all sorts of C functions that are calling and dying. Just keep backing down the call stack till you get to the point where your code is at. Click it, and boom, you can see where you what you where you're at when you called into the C code that is crashing. So the call stack is going to be very useful. Now this die sample is a free program. It comes out of several of the different ebooks, and you can get a copy of it if you go to uh, brokearebooks.com, take the free downloads link, and on the downloads page you'll find an ex uh, a link to download the, this die sample. Okay, in the next lectures on our debugging series, we're going to get down to business and start tackling much more difficult debugging situations, putting this all to use. Thank you.